My name's Sean Wittick and I'm a classical pianist and composer. For me, music's always been very much a big part of my life and since studying music at university, like many, I've struggled to find work opportunities in the music industry. I feel this is all the more significant in my hometown of Carlisle and its county Cumbria. Ursula, could you introduce yourself and tell us a little about the Carlisle Music Society? I'm Pete Bowyer and I'm a fairly new member of the Carlisle Music Society Committee. Um, we've been going really since the Second World War. The origins of the society lay in recitals that were given in the Second World War. The society formally began in 1947 under the name of North Cumbria Recitals. Uh, originally gave four concerts a year and that was fairly soon expanded to six. From the very beginning the aim of the society has always been the same really to present high quality chamber music in a nice intimate setting. The acoustics in this church are very good. Um, big contrast with bigger concerts that go on in the sands for example, full-scale symphony concerts. Um, so typically we'd have three or four performers here, sometimes just solo singers or or instrumentalists. I mean, to come and hear us costs £13 if you just turn up at the door, uh, but you sub can subscribe. So for £62 a year, you get six recitals, just over £10 each. And in our ongoing efforts to attract younger people, students can come in for £2 and um, unaccompanied children are free. How do you think classical music is appreciated in Cumbria from councils and the general public? That's an interesting and difficult question. Um, I would say that this part of the world is perhaps not best known for a close interest and a, and, a, and a widespread interest in classical music. It varies a little bit throughout the county. Carlisle, as you know, is the biggest city in the county, but probably not the one that attracts um, the best audiences for this kind of music. Kendall, which is half the size, probably does better. It's uh, socially a different kind of place, a more middle class town. Having said that, the Sand Centre regularly attracts well over a thousand people to big classical concerts. Typically we would get somewhere between 60 and 100 here for our recitals. But it's hard going. Um, there seems to be an assumption shared up here particularly that classical music is for older people. And if you look around our audiences you won't see all that many people under 40. With the Carlisle Music Society, have any discounts for the young when the employed and pensioners ever been considered? We don't offer discounts to pensioners. You could argue that we should, but the fact is, if we did, it would cover probably 70% of our audience. So we'd rather be cutting our own throats. But our, our older subscribers seem quite happy to pay the going rate. We don't offer discounts to the unemployed. Perhaps we should. I'll put that to the committee. Finally, do you have any advice for classical musicians wanting to start out in the industry? There are. Societies like ours around the county, uh, in Keswick, in Penrith, in Kendall, and almost certainly in the south and west as well, uh, who are always actively interested in, in employing and promoting these people and, and uh, giving them concert venues. And um, I imagine that when people come out of conservatoires and university music departments, they get themselves an agent who puts them in touch with people like us. So that's, from our point of view, that's the best advice. Could you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about the classical concerts held yes. here at the cathedral? I'm Jenny Fleming and I'm chairman of the Live at Lunchtime board and we organise um, two sets of concerts for the year. Can you tell us a bit about the opportunities available here for performers? How do they apply to perform here? We do try to use local talent wherever we can but it's a very varied programme that we, um, the 10 concerts consist of um, all sorts of musicians, instruments, um, choirs, um, orchestras. We um, 
charge five pounds for our live at lunchtime concert and um, two pound fifty for students any type of students um, under 15s are free we are not running the series to make a profit at all we just want to break even and over the last seven years we have been able to do this and we've built the program up over the, the last few years and we are now quite confident that we can continue in this way. Do you think classical music is gaining more or less popularity locally and nationally in recent years? I think nationally it, it's really taken off. Um, Cumbria is a difficult place to promote classical music yeah. and this is why in our lunchtime concerts we try to include all kinds of music. For instance our clientele um, live at lunchtime, it, they're elderly, maybe um, like myself, retired, my sort of age, having been a member of the festival board for over 10 years. We try so hard to bring younger people into the concerts. We do have, um, we do try and promote a young person's part of, of the festival every year. And we have schools coming and then we bring all the children from the schools to sing here in front of the altar. It really is very popular because it brings all the parents in, all the grandparents, all the small brothers and sisters who maybe run about throughout the concert, but it doesn't matter. And we found that that is an introduction um, to music and um, it's good grounding and they enjoy it. Yeah. And if we can continue with that, continue with the funding for that, that it would be amazing. Yeah.